So in previous video, we have seen how to derive the Porter and Momo equation for calculation of vapor rate. Now the equation which is mentioned here, which is V is equal to D plus F RF of an alpha minus one is based on certain assumptions, right? One of the assumptions is that, you know, your light key is only going into the distillate and no light key in bottoms and the heavy key is only going into the bottoms and no heavy key goes into the distillate. Right, so that is the, you know, uh, the, these are the assumptions which will help us to simplify the equations. We first write the metal balance equation here, which is V is equal to L plus D, and then we take D, uh, you know, as a common term, and we write 1 plus L by D. L by D can be written as R by R minimum, right. So, sorry, uh, L by D can be written as R uh, reflex ratio, and reflex ratio can be written as R minimum into the factor which is the uh, multiplied multiply to the minimum uh, reflex ratio. This factor can be between 1.12, 1.15, 1.2, whatever. Right. So, uh, this is the equation which I have and I need the value of R minimum. In order to calculate R minimum, we assume that Underwood equation is applicable. So, Underwood equation is this. Now, if I want to calculate the value of R minimum, I require XDLK, XFLK, XDHK and XFHK. But with the assumption that no heavy key going into the distillate, this term becomes 0. So, my equation would be 1 upon alpha minus 1 XDLK upon XFLK. But the assumption, you know, which says that only light key goes only in the distillate, nothing in bottom, XD by XF can be replaced by F by D. So, when I replace R minimum as 1 upon alpha minus 1 into F by D here, my equation would be 1 plus rf alpha minus 1 f by d which can be further simplified if you wish as d plus f rf into alpha minus 1. So, if I want to calculate vapor rate of any particular column, I require distillate which anyhow I know, I require feed flow rate which also I know, I need to define the you know uh, factor which is multiplying minimum reflex ratio, I do not need the actual value of reflex ratio or r minimum right and I require the alpha value. Now, this is for you know uh, this is for a single column. Right. So, calculation uh, for all the possible columns in the sequence will give me the vapor rate for the entire sequence. So, this equation is for one column. I apply this equation for all the columns uh, present in the sequence. Make the summation of that. So, if there are three columns, I will calculate V1, V2, V3 and then the for the sequence V is V1 plus V2 plus V3. Depending upon the, you know, feed of feed composition, feed, uh, you know, quality, we can, you know, modify these equations if, uh, you know, uh, your Q is like if your if you desaturated vapor, your Q is 0. If, you're, if, if it is liquid, Q is 1. In that case, your V dash and V would be same if Q is 1. And if it is vapor, your V dash would be V minus F, where V dash is vapor flow in the bottom of the column, V is vapor flow in the top of the column. So, if you want to calculate vapor flow in the bottom of the column, you can calculate it like this. If it is saturated liquid, both the, you know, uh, vapor rates are same. This can be, you know, seen, uh, there, is, there is something called as marginal vapor rate method, which can be seen in this textbook. Now, let us see the example uh, about calculation of, you know, uh, vapor rate using Porter and Momo method. So, I have got, you know, benzene to methyl benzene, which is the same example, which we were discussing, right? And, uh, you know, uh, the values are 269, 288, 57 in terms of uh, feed and uh, these are the alpha values and these are alpha adjacent values. So, alpha value are with, with respect to ethyl benzene and alpha adjacent are with respect to the two adjacent species. This is the equation. Now, if my first, if my first, uh, you know, first sequence is giving me benzene from top and toluene and ethyl benzene going into the second column and then I got toluene here and ethyl benzene here. So, for this, so for that, so for that particular sequence, Right, I have distillate as 269, feed as the summation of these three, right. So, 269 is the distillate, 
six zero eight is the feed which is summation of all these three. Alpha, like RF, I'm considering one point one. Alpha would be between benzene and toluene, which is one point nine six minus one. So this is the vapor rate for column one. Column two, which separates ethyl benzene and toluene, has a feed of this two. So two eighty eight plus fifty seven, making it three three nine. The you know uh, the distillate for second is two eighty eight because I am separating toluene. RF I am maintaining the same, and alpha adjacent will become one point eighty. So this becomes my vapor rate for column two. So there are two columns in direct sequence, V one plus V two, and I'll get this as my vapor rate for direct sequence. Now what is indirect sequence? In indirect sequence, what I'll have is my benzene toluene will come from top, and ethyl benzene will come from bottom. Right, and this will be separated here. Right. So, what is my feed? Feed for V one is same. That is six zero eight. But my distillate would be benzene plus toluene. So, that the distillate would be this two. So, this is my feed. Distillate would be the summation of this two. Alpha would be 1.9, 1.8 because I am separating in first column toluene and ethyl benzene. Right in first column I am separating toluene and ethyl benzene, so my alpha in first column would be 1.8 minus 1. So this is my vapor rate for column one. Vapor rate for column two would be my distillate would be 269 because then I'll be separating uh, benzene from the mixture of benzene toluene. Feed would be summation of these two, that is 551. Alpha would be between these two minus one, making it nine hundred. So the total, you know, total vapor rate is double two eight seven. So naturally, direct sequence is better compared to indirect. So this is how we can implement, uh, you know, this particular scheme, right? Now, what makes the, you know, uh, vapor rate different for different sequence? So for that, let us see an example. Say for example, I have got a four-species mixture A, B, C, D, and uh, you know I separate in first sequence. I separate A from B, C, D, then I separate B, C from D, and then separate B and C. This is my first sequence. In the second sequence, in the first column I separate D, in second column I separate A, and then I separate B and C. So these are two different sequences, and the vapor rate for these two different sequences should be different. How? And what is the reason? so if i say that for you know a b c d like my mass flow rate is mi that is where i is i can be a b c d for this particular uh, thing so to make it a general uh, you know calculation if i calculate the flow rate of key component in all the columns so let's say first column here so my key components are ab so flow rate of key component here is ma plus mb in second column my flow rate of key component is mc plus md and in third component it is mb plus mc right and flow rate of known key if i say in first column it is mc plus md in second column it is mb and there is no known key in third column right so key component flow rate is ma plus mb Plus MC plus MD plus MB plus MC, making it MA plus two times MB plus MC plus MD. And flow rate of known key component is MD, right? Plus MC plus MB. This is for this sequence. For this sequence, if I calculate key component, it is MC plus MD, MA plus MB, MB plus MC. And for known key component, it is MA plus MB plus MC. If you look at these two equations. the flow rate of key components in both the sequence are identical but the flow rate of known key components differ from one sequence to other and hence the distribution of known key components are you know the reason why it has different vapor rates right and that can be shown graphically like this that is this is the summation of components so if it is a key component for the entire sequence it remains same so this is sequence 1 Sequence two, sequence three, sequence four. You see that the key component flow rate would remain identical. 
that's not going to be the case for known key component. So when I make the summation of known key and key, this is the sequence which will give me a lesser vapor rate. So known key distribution, you know, is the key for vapor rate, uh, you know, value. So you can try out solving this problem where are, when there are four species. So the flow rates are provided, k values are provided. Only thing which you have to see here is that these k values are randomly distributed. They are not in any sequence. So you have to first, uh, you know, uh, arrange them in descending order and then you can, uh, you know, uh, solve the problem. Another variation of this kind of problem is that I give k value. Along with that, the chemical nature of the species are also given. You just see this. So, you know, we have seen the heuristics and we would like to remove corrosive and slightly toxic as soon as possible. So you will first draw all the possible sequences. Since there are 5 species, there are 14 sequences. But out of 14 sequences, you will only compare the sequence where component D and component B are removed as fast as possible. All other theoretical sequences you can ignore. So, so this is another kind of thing which will come practically your way. That how do you mix the vapor rate calculation and the you know uh, constraint process constraints which are applicable when you want to uh, you know devise the sequence. So I think we'll stop there and when we meet next time in next video we'll talk about how to save energy of a distillation column by changing some or making some operational improvements. Thank you.